This is an eclectic group of games, and honestly, I'm not sure how many things we're going to end on. It's kind of flying at the seat of my pants, but uh, we got some really interesting stuff, including a game for a system that you would never expect would be available brand new on Amazon. It's the Bargain Game Hunter. Now, I mentioned in the last episode that things were starting to slow down a bit, and they are. Um, there are a bunch of new games that are coming out very soon, um, so obviously I will include those in future videos, but I, I have pretty dramatically slowed down on my game pickups. I still have a few I want to pick up, but um, for now, things are just kind of slowing down for a few different reasons. But I do have some pickups here. Um, including a very interesting one, which we'll get to. Uh, so we're going to start off with a new release PS5 game. Now, this game was on Game Pass for a very long time, and I had it downloaded. I never played it. It's not on Game Pass anymore. Um, thankfully, I have a physical copy, so I can still play it. Um, unfortunately, they did not release, at least a easily accessible copy did not come out on Xbox. So I got it on PS5, and that is... High on Life on the PS5. It's the Game of the Year edition and includes the High on Knife um, DLC on disc, which is kind of cool. The disc is loose, which is why I'm trying to like get it back in the, I might just open it because yeah, I don't, I don't like my discs being loose and probably realistically, I'm probably not going to keep this sealed. I think I'm going to actually open it so I can play it, but High on Life PS5. So I had to add that to the collection. I think it'll be a nice addition. So then I went to GameStop. Um, now, the week that I'm recording this is the week after Pro Week. Uh, so last week I went to GameStop for Pro Week where we got a little bit extra trading credit uh, for trading in stuff. And I decided it was time to trade in basically all of my doubles or games that I had on multiple platforms specifically the PS5 and the PS4. Um, so I ended up trading in my open copy of Dreams because I have a sealed copy. I traded in Final Fantasy VII Remake because I have the PS5 version with Integrate on the disc, which is the much better version. Um, I traded in Neo and Neo 2 because I have the collection on PS5. Um, I traded in Until Dawn because I'm going to be getting the remake on PS5. I think that's it. I also returned um, the one game that GameStop messed up on the last time, which was I ordered a copy of We Play Motion on the Wii, and they sent me just regular replay. So I returned that as well. So most of that trading credit went towards a pre-order of Mario Party, uh, Super Mario Party Jamboree, which I'm very excited to play. Um, but I asked what games they have that are retro. Now, this is an interesting thing, and I will tell you this because, um, you know, it's a, it's a new hot topic. GameStop, of course, announced their new retro stores. Um, and unfortunately, it's not all of them. And for me in particular, it's not great. Because essentially, the one retro store is a good, like, 45 minutes away um, over by UCF. <laughs> not good so i was worried that they were going to start shipping off all of their retro games that they get traded into that store and it turns out they are however they can keep them in store for about two weeks so you have a very limited window at least in the store that i went to um where you can actually find retro retro games at non-retro game stops before they're shipped to retro game stops so while I was there, I did pick up a game because um, they had this on PS2 and it was really cheap. So I figured, eh, why not? You don't see this very often. Final Fantasy X-2 on the PS2. Now I didn't actually need this because I actually have the remaster on PS4, but it's a really nice condition copy. It's complete. The disc is in great shape. So I figured, you know what, why not? And I got it entirely with trading credit. So I ain't complaining. So, got a new PS2 game from GameStop. 
Now here's the funky one. Now I saw this on Amazon, uh, and again, thanks to uh, Cheap Ass Gamer for pointing out that this was available. And I thought, that is such a novelty. The fact that this is available brand new on Amazon in 2024 is baffling. So I had to get it for the novelty of it. Now I don't have this console, so I can't play it. But just the fact that I have it is is fun enough. I think it was worth the seven bucks that I paid for it. It was also very cheap. We have Coaster Works on the Sega Dreamcast, a brand new sealed Sega Dreamcast game that I got off of Amazon in 2024. It's a roller coaster tycoon like like roller coaster game. I've heard it's not very good. But the fact that I found a brand new sealed Dreamcast game on Amazon in 2024 is just baffling. So I had to get it. And then we come to our last two games. These are both GameStop pickups. Um, so during Pro Week, they had a really good sale on a particular game, which I don't have. And I am collecting all of them. Uh, so I did need this game. And since I needed that game, I tried to look at local stores, nobody had it in stock, so I'm like, all right, fine, I'll order it online. And so that means I had to fill out an order, so I got another game, which, in hindsight, I probably could have waited and got it later. I, I mean, I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it is. But anyway, the game in question that I was hoping to get, and unfortunately it is a GameStop new, meaning it's not sealed. It's in a wrapper that they sealed themselves. Um, it's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 on the Xbox. Now, I know this game is bad. I know it's on Game Pass. But I want to have every single Call of Duty physically. Um, I did just get Modern Warfare... Or not Modern Warfare, Advanced Warfare back. Um, so after I got that one, this was the only one that I did not have a physical copy of. Um, so now I have it. It was 20 bucks. Granted, that's mostly because the new one's coming out very soon. Um, but I wanted to get it for 20 bucks, so there we go. And then the game I got to fill out the order, and, you know, people have mixed opinions on this. I've heard it's I've heard it's decent. Um, I'm excited to play it. That's mostly why I got it. Star Wars Outlaws on the Xbox Series X. Um, it's a third-person Star Wars action game by Massive, the same team who made The Division. Again, I've heard very mixed things. Apparently it didn't sell well and uh, Ubisoft is in deep trouble because of it. Um, so we'll see, um, but I'm excited to try it, give it a shot. Hopefully it's better than people say. So that's what I picked up so far. Um, I have a few games coming in fairly soon. I'm not exactly sure what. So I'm not gonna end the episode just yet because I, I feel that's that's too short of an episode. Um, so we're going to add a few more things and then we're going to call it a day for a, a fairly short episode. But since we're not getting as many games, I got to kind of stretch this out a bit. So, uh, we'll get to that. All right. It is time for a recap for this week's episode. Uh, again, a pretty short one, uh, mostly because <laughs> it's funny. I said I was trying to slow down and I meant that, um, however, we've got two more episodes worth of stuff coming over the next week or so. So I've got more episodes coming. Uh, there's some good stuff there, but let's go ahead and get to what I picked up this week. And I think, uh, I think I did pretty well. So we're gonna start off with two brand new pickups that I got um, that were not shown earlier. We'll start off with Best Buy, where I picked up Dave the Diver on the Switch. Um, I've heard good things about this game. Apparently it's like a RPG management game where you like hunt for fish and then you sell them in a sushi restaurant. I've heard it's good. I've never played it. I have some DLC that was limited release that I got for it and I figured, well, might as well get the actual game to go with it. Um, so yeah, pretty excited to add that to the collection. I paid 32 and it's worth 40 bucks. So a good solid pickup in Dave the Diver, pretty happy with that. Next up, and this one might be a little bit controversial, I've beaten this game, I played this game, I used to own it, I traded in the original copy because this version was coming out, and I figured, you know what, I think it's worth doing again. We have Until Dawn, the PS5 remake. So, 
This was a PS4 game. They made the remake for PS5. The main reason why I got this is because DualSense features mostly. Um, I don't think Until Dawn needed a remake per se, but they added better graphics, um, improved audio. There's some new content in this version as well. And then the big thing is the dual sets because Until Dawn was one of the few games that I feel really used all the different features of the DualShock 4 on the PS4. So I'm very curious to see how the remake uses the dual sense. Um, but yeah, I really like Until Dawn. I figured it was worth a grab. I paid 60, it's worth 60. Um, thankfully it was only 60 and not 70. <laughs> um, I do think this game is probably one that if you really want to play it, you could probably wait or play it on PS4, but I, I really want to play the DualSense features, so that's why I got it. Now let's get to our games that we picked up early in the week, and we're going to start off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare on the Xbox. Um, it's the only Call of Duty game I do not own currently. Well, now I do. Um, so. Now I'm caught up, I just need Black Ops 6 when that comes out, and then I'll have all of them once again. I heard this game was bad, but it was on sale for 20 bucks um, during Pro Week at GameStop, so I figured, you know what, might as well grab it for that price. Paid 20, and this one is worth 49. Actually, I paid 19, because uh, Pro deal. 49, so really good value there. Next up is Star Wars Outlaws on the Xbox Series X. Again, a kind of controversial game. I do want to play it. I heard it's interesting. It did not sell well, and Ubisoft might be in deep trouble because of it, but I want to try it out, and I figured I could get it for less than retail. I mean, it came out like maybe a month ago, so it's a very new game. Um, I paid 53 for 55 complete, so... Pretty good. Next we have uh, this game. I, I did have to open it because disc was loose. I'm, this seems to happen all the time with PS5 games specifically, where the the jewel in the middle just is not keeping the discs in place. It's really annoying if you're trying to collect sealed stuff. But uh, yeah, so I had to open this. But I mean, I want to play this game too. We have High on Life on the PS5. This is the Game of the Year edition. It does include the High on Knife DLC on the disc. Um, yeah, pretty pretty excited. I've heard great things about it. I wish I played it when it was on Game Pass. I didn't, but now I can play it on PS5. So, pretty happy with that. Uh, I paid 50 and it's worth 50 because it's a new release. Then I went to GameStop. Um, I traded in a bunch of my older duplicates from PS4, including Until Dawn. Um, and I put most of the credit down on the new Mario Party, which comes out later this month, and I also took a look at the retro games. Did grab one, and that is Final Fantasy X-2 on the PS2. It's a complete copy, it's a great shape. I figured, you know what, might as well grab it. Uh, so I paid nothing out of pocket. I actually paid $10 in credit for six, so. It is worth less than what I paid, but I didn't pay anything because I paid in credit, so. And then last but certainly not least, the most intriguing game of the lineup this week, and that is my brand new sealed Sega Dreamcast game. Coaster Works on the Dreamcast. I don't have a Dreamcast. I also heard this game was not good, but just the fact that I have a sealed Sega Dreamcast game that I bought on Amazon in 2024 makes it worth it. It's just funny. <laughs> so I'm glad I was able to snag that. Uh, I paid seven bucks and it's worth 10. So pretty happy there. And that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. I do have some more stuff coming over the next couple weeks. So you will see some more bargain game hunters. There's also a bunch of new release games coming out in October. Of course, we're in the middle of like kind of the big fall period of game releases. So there's got a lot of big name games coming out, including a couple big collector's editions uh, that I'm excited to check out. So yeah, there's some stuff coming, so stay tuned. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell. That way you know when new videos drop. 
and I will see you on the next episode of The Bargain Game Hunter. Bye.